have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. I am your two-time reigning, defending, undisputed Scholars of Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, Scholar Tark. And with me again is the former champion, Scholar Brian. Hi, Brian. The mountain troll has come out from under his bridge to give his opinions on the week in wrestling. <laughs> you do look like a mountain troll, don't you? That's the point. <laughs> I'm a bad troll. I'm a bad troll. Uh, and the fact that we're actually quoting a troll in Central Park just shows... How tired we are. Yep. There's just so much tiresome things going on in the world of professional wrestling that it was even too much for Scholar Jeff. That's why he's not here. To yeah, he took a nap, hasn't woken up the entire week. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you take him to a special bachelor party over the weekend. He still hasn't recovered from it. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. We're wishing him a speedy recovery from the greatness that was his bachelor party. You're welcome. I gotta figure out my movements here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're tired. It's late. Let's just get right into it. Let's just get right into uh, Raw versus SmackDown Live. Let's start it off with Monday Night Raw. And I must say, after watching this one episode, you must be very happy because... What you've been predicting for quite a while seems to be happening with the leading of a potential heel turn from one lunatic, Dean Ambrose. The only thing that worries me is now that they've pointed it out, they did the same thing last time where it started out looking like Dean Ambrose was the one that was going to turn. Like, he got all cocky. He's he's the one that started going off the grid and all that. And then all of a sudden, it's Seth Rollins that turns. Is it, and so it's... So it's, are they going to go the obvious route? Which they should this time. Because I think Dean Ambrose... I, I think Dean Ambrose could be what... Becky Lynch is for the women's division. I think D that could be Dean Ambrose for the men's division. On Raw. On Raw. That kind of turn just completely just puts him the over cool the top. Guy. Just completely puts him over the top. And you get a fresh new take for the character. But what really intrigues me... Okay, yeah, we've seen that coming for a while. What intrigues me is what happens between Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins in the back. Mm. And, and, and Dolph Ziggler coming in and being like, so what were you guys talking about? And Drew McIntyre was like, don't worry about it. All I'm right. like, so, so it's like, are, are we looking at some kind of double turn? It, seem, it seems they're hinting that way. And to give a little contact, Raw starts off with, well, officially starts off, because I'm not counting that Baron Corbin garbage when he's yeah, saying, was, to, he's saying happy horrid. birthday to Stephanie. That, and was, that, now, that was so dumb. <laughs> she said that his job is on the line from the six-man tag match, correct? No. No? No. She, she basically said he's being a shit GM because he's given himself matches for the Universal Championship. And then what does she do? She puts him in a match against the people he was going against last week. Basically does the exact same thing he did last week. So it's like, okay, that segment made no sense. It just, so that, it just shows that whenever <laughs> Stephanie shows up on Raw, it, it's not really a good thing. But And then out comes the shield. Yeah, now back to the beginning. And, and Dean Out comes the shield. Dean Ambrose starts off saying, we are the workhorses, we are the ones that run, that run Monday Night Raw, and Roman Reigns takes the microphone, pretty much adds on to what he says, and he said that we are running this place with... As him. evidenced by all the titles we hold, when, Seth with, Rollins and Dean Ambrose hold... Uh, no, not no, Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins and Roman Reigns hold up their titles, and Dean Ambrose is in the back, uh, looking mean. He's just like... And I'm hmm. like... Oh, 
Okay. There's a setting up the main, the big story that's going on for tonight. Yeah. And then out comes the, I, I'm just going to call him what I call him, Mick Ziggleman, basically calling out the fact that Dean Ambrose is kind of the odd man out between this group. And, and the they really put in some really good arguments. And the intriguing thing about it is, yeah, they're putting in good arguments, but most of the time you don't listen or anything like that. You can see Dean Ambrose is listening, taking it all in. Well, yeah. Just like, it, like I said, what they were saying, the fact that Dean, when Dean was on SmackDown, he was WWE champion all by himself. And... When Roman Reigns becomes Universal Champion, the first thing he does is call Dean Ambrose to basically be his backup. And when he gets injured, Seth Rollins brings in Jason Jordan as his tag team partner without the blink of an eye. In about, what was it, two weeks? Not even. I actually think it was the next week. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, good points are raised and, and by the people who should be raising them. Dolph Ziggler was his first challenger as WWE, as champion. WWE mm-hmm. champion. So he would know. <laughs> that and as much as you, and I believe Jeff was not a big fan of that feud, I still loved that feud. I actually thought it was really good. No, I, it, I, had, it had potential, but they didn't book it well enough. I wasn't a fan of Dolph Ziggler coming out of nowhere and getting a shot. But once they actually started putting the work in and you were getting the promos that they were cutting against each other, I came around. And then they, sh- and then they fucking ruined it in, their ruined it in that match. match. That and was then, bad. <laughs> so that's it. it was definitely a match at SummerSlam <laughs> that they basically was like, yeah, you're only getting this so-and-so amount of time. Yeah. They, it, it, it hurt. And this storyline is the reason why I liked Raw so much this week as opposed to other weeks because it wasn't just a shield running roughshod it, about everything we now have a point oh yeah we, we now mm-hmm. have a point to this whole six man ta- it's not just Braun Strowman getting fed to Roman Reigns it's not just what we thought could possibly happen McZiggles being fed to Ambrose and Rollins no the real point now, now that we've reached this point, we now know what the real point of this feud is. To try to drive a wedge between Ambrose and the other two of the Shield. And, and you That's know the what? only real way they can go with this story. And, and you know what? The, the, it, the two best people on the Raw roster to do it right now are McIntyre and Ziggler. And if we get a, a dueling storyline with McIntyre having to think... Then it's like McIntyre and Dean Ambrose are both thinking about their spots in the company. Imagine, if you will, if they both say screw their teammates and you get a McIntyre and Ambrose team alliance. Up, hmm. alliance, like not like a tag team, but just like an alliance kind of deal. They'd run roughshod. <laughs> it, would be a, it would be a very interesting. I guess you can say team up, but I mean like, but but I mean now there's layers. Tag team, yeah. Now there's layers to the story that we weren't even thinking about. The one thing I like about it is that it takes the main story, it takes the main focus of this feud away from Roman Reigns. It's now interesting. It is now because because it's it's a focusing on a Shield member that people actually do genuinely care about. Yeah, it's not just about hey, let's make Roman Reigns let's have Roman Reigns be the main focal point. Let's have this be a ploy to get Roman Reigns over. No, no, this is just a thing. A storyline that, as you said, threw a wedge into the shield, the machine that is the shield. Because going on later, I, I, I guess we can go straight into the match because it, goes it into leads the ma- into the... Okay, let's, but, let's talk about the, the actual setup. Before, it's Stephanie says, you and two tag team partners of your choice versus the shield. And a six-man tag as the main event. My immediate thought is, it's going to be authors of pain if they don't have a if they don't have a squash match on the card. Indeed. Two hours go by, they're nowhere to be found. At that point, I'm like, it's authors of pain. Yeah. And then in the backstage segments leading up to it, Dolph Ziggler goes up to Dean Ambrose and says, "The three of us are going to be on the ramp." 
watching the match. If you're down, give, give us a the, signal. Give us the signal. We'll take care of the rest. So now we get to the match. Now we get to the match. Straightforward is a ma- a raw main event match. Nothing. Yeah. It really. It was really nothing. And, and you knew, you knew that the Shield was gonna win. You knew, oh, obviously. Obviously. But the real intriguing point is at the end of the match because Dean Ambrose first. During the match, Seth Rollins is getting beaten down on the outside by uh, all, by the Alters of Pain, mm-hmm. and Dean Ambrose does nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing. I, it was just he was showing that he could stand up to them by himself. He was take he was doing a lot of offense. He was really building up some momentum, and then Raw hit uh, Raw Roman hit the blind tag, and Dean. Dove out, of the, dove out of the ring and took down the Authors of Pain so Roman Reigns could get the spear. One, two, three. Yeah, but I'm talking about earlier in the match, before the ending, mm. where, where Rollins is taken out on the outside and Dean Ambrose does nothing. Mm. Is it, it, so it, it goes on. Yeah. And then at the end of the match, Dean Ambrose is on the outside and he takes a little bit too long <laughs> He goes from the one. He goes from the one side and of the ring. And even when he's and even when he does go in for the shield fist bump, he's looking at the three of them like conflicted. Oh like yeah, it not, was a very. It it wasn't it wasn't a complete fuck you to Mick Ziggleman. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It was like. Because it, even it's if, keeping the story yeah. going. This so, like this chapter is like he's choosing to be with the shield. But you could t- see you could t- you could tell that they've gotten in there, mm-hmm. and they know they've gotten in there. So it's like it might not be tonight, but we're still in there. That's it. The so, sig- the signal the signal that Dolph mentioned is still open. Yeah, and I mean, who knows? Not now. There's a wrinkle, and Super Showdown isn't as clear. Mm-hmm. As it was before, because before it was a clear shield win. It was a it was a clear shield win because it was a clear house show. But now they're actually building layers to this show that it's a lot more than just a glorified house show. It actually is yeah. be, being considered a pay per view. And and with it being considered a pay per view, there's a chance. That shit's gonna go down. <laughs> it's so very inter- It's gonna be a very interesting go home show next week. So God, next week's the prediction con- show. Congratulations, WWE. You've made a feud that nobody cared about because we figured how it was all going down. You you made us give a shit about it because you did something smart for mm-hmm. once in your life. You focused on someone you should be focusing on instead of the person you shouldn't be. Oh, well, we're done with that main storyline. Now let's go move on to the big controversy that came out of this Raw because it, it had to be brought up as much, oh, yes. much to my dismay. The, the six-woman tag match between Natalia and the Bellas versus the Riot Squad. And in the beginning, Brie Bella brings on those yes kicks and one of them goes way too high Hits Liv Morgan in the face. And as Liv Morgan... Twice. Mor- and, no, it hits her once, and as... And she's knocked out on the first one. Oh, yeah, she's you see, done. as she's going down. But, and, Brie Bella, and Brie Bella can't see it, so, she, so Liv Morgan comes back down as she's going down face first. And Brie Bella goes for another yes kick in the same spot that she would normally do, but hey... Her face is there now, so she got it twice. It's not so even the fact it. that, like, the first kick, it, you noticed, because I, I watched this clip so many times, Brie Bella was reaching that point where she was doing it more constant. Yeah. To the point where you can tell she wasn't even, like, it was sloppy. Oh, yeah. They, they've both been sloppy as hell since they came back, and there was, it was only a matter of time before it, it actually caused damage. But 
And you gotta give to Liv Morgan wanting to get back in that ring and was able to do that triple suplex before they were just like, no, stay the hell out of the ring. But are we and now reaching, we got a concussion. Are we reaching that point where if you get knocked out, the match should be stopped? Are we reaching that point where it's getting to be too much? Scholars quick talk. I'm gonna say no. I just, I honestly felt like they should have worked their way around it a lot more. Like, perfect example would be when uh, Kevin Nash was in that multi-man tag match, and next thing you know, he blows one of his quad. And the fir- next, first thing they do, the first thing the uh, wrestlers do, is basically tag them in and just get continue the match while he ro- while Kevin Nash rolls out of the ring. It should have been that. Uh, they tried their best to do that, but with, uh, whichever Bella was that sucker punched Ruby Riot in the face. Yeah, because the the controversy at first was Brie Bella is sloppy. Okay, her but, kicks were. But about twenty four hours later, okay, it turned into should matches be stopped when when the wrestlers are knocked out. I'm still going like, to say so, no. So it was basically two different controversies merged into one. I think the one big, <laughs> the one big thing that I've, that I've read about is that the ref should have done a lot more. Oh, yeah. To keep Liv Morgan, like, yeah, should have Mor- Liv- went after her the, immediately and kept her out of the ring. Yeah, they should... Props to Liv Morgan for taking that suplex, but she should have been nowhere near near that spot. Near I that agree. spot, because that probably rattled her even more. Because you saw her try to get up and drop again. So that, so yeah, and and then of course, of course, Michael Cole <laughs> on the outside. She's in the back getting looked on as she's, as she's outside. Right, as she's <laughs> right. Being checked by a doctor, you come on now, man. Michael Cole, cameraman, sync up your shit. <laughs> come on, that's it. And we're trying to look back on the rest of Raw because there's really nothing more else to say about that. As much it just leaves the question that the Bella should, at least Bree should, you know, step out of the ring. Yeah, stay away. Because well, here, it, this has reached the point where it's more than ring rust. This is just... No. It, it's been a month. You've been in multiple matches. Come on now. You've had <laughs> something going on to now it's reached the point where someone else is getting hurt because of your stupidity. Yeah. So... Let them have their stupid Nikki Bella women's title match against Ronda Rousey at Evolution and then... The, the Bella should disappear. Go back on reality TV. Go back. Hey, at, go back. That's at what doing, they're good at. That's and that's yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's something that they're better known for. Let's yeah. just go with that. And and you know what? Raw as a whole. Okay, it it really picked up after the last couple of weeks. I I actually enjoyed it more than. M- more than I have in a little while because of the cohesive storyline flowing for Dean Ambrose in, in between and and there was you had the what the what the hell moment of a uh, bunch of guys who haven't been on Raw in a while uh, Finn Balor versus uh, Jinder Mahal with Bailey and Alicia Fox on the outside. That was just more it, to, to promote the mixed match yeah, challenge. Yeah, promote the mixed match the mixed match challenge, but I could have done without it. The Leo Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley might be the greatest pairing that I've never thought of. <laughs> and to think this is all just build up for Bobby Lashley and John Cena versus Elias and Kevin Owens at Where Super Where we all Showdown. know what's good. You want to talk about a house a house show match? <laughs> That's gonna be it. It's like, yeah, let's just try and prom- let's try and uh, you know build this one this one match without the fourth contestant because he's a part timer now and 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 I love I I love the Elias line. 
Come on down, Leo Rush. I've got a high chair for you in the ring. <laughs> you know, because you know, because he's short. Yeah. I enjoyed that. It was, it was it was fun. Yeah. That was a fun segment, and I will and I will I will agree. And sometimes some sometimes you got a lot. If if it's entertaining, you can deal with the logic gaps and the and the and the, and the dumb reason. Oh, he's short. Hey, hi chair. And, Jokes. <laughs> and it. you gotta give it to uh, Ziggle Tire versus uh, Revival. That was that actually was really a really good. good match. You had you had near fall. You knew that the Revival wasn't gonna win, but the near falls actually worked. Does this count as a face turn for the Revival? Because they were booked as, they on, were booked as the face team in this match for it de- obvious it depends, reasons. It depends. It depends on where they go with it. From here, because anybody is going to be a face against Mac, against Ziggle Tire at this point. Mm-hmm. So where do they go from here? Yeah, the one thing that I hated, I hated it so much. Victor gets a random clean victory over Chad Gable. I was just a, actually it was Connor. Connor, yeah, Con- Connor was, gets a clean. Yeah, I was actually that about to boot ta- that one up. That should tell you. Everything you need to know. I mixed them up. Connor gets a clean victory over Chad Gable. You think Chad Gable's gaining some momentum? Hey, guess what? All gone now. <laughs> you lost clean to a guy who hasn't won on Raw in years. <laughs> years. What the hell is that? Even, what the hell is this even meaning for them? It's this. I like Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. Yes. They it, are a it's fun very, act. It's 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 a it's an ins, it's an inspiring choice. Like I would have never thought of Chad Gable teaming with Bobby Roode, but they started doing it, and and Chad Gable, being the overzealous, glorious fiend that he is, okay, it works. It's entertaining. It's fun, and and then you do and then this. you do this. <laughs> That's it. Well, it's only this feud. This pointless feud is going to keep going, and it's, in my opinion, it's starting to hurt. Gable and Root be, being a starting fun, a fun little act. Starting, it is for me. It's it's done. It's done now. It's well, done now. Well, you lost to, you lost to, Connor. You lost to Connor. Okay, of the Ascension, a team. That hasn't won a match on Raw since the beginning of time. <laughs> okay, that's it. You lost. Beginning there wasn't time. even bullshit. You lost. Well, you, I'm gonna any, wait. I'm gonna wait and see what go, they do for the go home show. There before is I, no before there, I close the show, before I close the door on this. There, there is no wait and see for me. The door is closed. You lost well, to Connor. You, no, it's I, done. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> there were. There were a few, there were a few down moments. There were a few up moments, but I will agree, this definitely has been a very entertaining RAW, and now it's building on layers for the main story that is the Shield versus. I'm gonna just give it. A, I'm gonna give it them because WWE, the, the Hounds of Justice versus the Dogs of War. That's that's the best you're gonna get out and, of me. And you know what? If if it's based on those lines, I can deal with that name. Mm-hmm. I, I can deal with that name because based on those lines, it makes sense. If, if you don't call them the Shield, you call them the Hounds of Justice. So it's like if it, the Hounds of Justice versus the Dogs of War sounds pretty fucking it sounds pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. The Shield versus the Dogs of War. No. How does that sound? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> nah, I just would. I would probably just call them Chaos. But, but that's the, just me. Yeah, the added wrinkles to a story that was going nowhere, and you made it mean something. Mm-hmm. And we'll see where it goes from here. For the go home show, exactly. And that brings us to SmackDown Live, which I'm just gonna do my Raw versus SmackDown Live. This this de- this still was the better show, but I'm not taking that away from Raw. It definitely it Raw was a good show, but I'm still gonna stick with SmackDown because. The difference between Raw and SmackDown for me is that every storyline actually meant something for me. 
Well, except Naomi, except Naomi and Oscar versus the Iconics. I, I don't even. That's the only thing. It, uh, yeah. That's the only thing that took it. That is the only thing I don't care about. When you have Becky Lynch taking down Charlotte, it's like and and doing the I'm gonna stand on your shoulder and lift the t- and lift the title. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what happens? The crowd goes nuts. The crowd goes so, nuts for it. So, but that's not. We're even, gonna say it. We're gonna say it. But every week. But we're, for the first time. But for the first time in the last couple of weeks, that wasn't the main focus of SmackDown. No. The main focus this week. Rusev was Day. Rusev, was Rusev Day. Yes. <laughs> and Rusev and Lana coming out to the ring and calling out Aiden English for the simple question, why? And Aiden English. This promo. I I think I. That was his coming out party. That was definitely this a promo. great promo. This okay. whole ev- everything about this whole segment was just fantastic, in my opinion. With Rusev and Lana saying, "What's up with that?" Aiden, and, and Aiden, Aiden coming out, going out his, with the... first his whole his whole video packages of how I guess you could say dominant that Rusev Day was, even though. Really, really, not. really. When you really look at the not. long run, they could have done a lot more with Rusev Day, which is something we talked about yeah. last week. And they threw in, and then Aiden throws the second video package. Says once Lana started showing up, they started falling apart. But as we were just saying, they didn't have any. They didn't have very much to uh, build upon for Lana to fall apart. And it all led to that final line from Aiden English. So he said, "Yeah." That, that's what I that's what I love about you, Lana. You're just so honest. You were even gonna go to Rusev last week and tell him what I said. But here's the thing: Are you truly honest with him? Oh, what what do you mean, Aiden? What what are you? T- Did you tell him about what happened in, in Milwaukee? Milwaukee? <laughs> and then My leaves. Co- and then le- that that was his pipe bomb. He even like pipe bomb. Boom. And the crowd is going nuts. They're just going, yes, 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 Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. <laughs> so the big, the big rumor is that they're hinting the fact that a segment that The Rock had with Lana a few, like a few months back, even bringing up the Wisconsin wheelbarrow as an interesting position. So they may pull the whole storyline of Lana having an inti- uh, one night with The Rock. How do you feel about that? As it, it's the same thing with uh, it, it's the same thing as the uh, storyline that we talked about earlier. I'm down for any wrinkle that will make this storyline make sense and and actually be like it. It'll bring more character to Rusev and Lana. And Aiden English being the one to call it out. Now, do I think it'll be The Rock? Because that was that wasn't a couple months ago. That was a couple years ago. Was it years ago? It was a couple years ago. Okay, so I think that it's gonna be something about Aiden English and Lana, mm. which which will really. With if it's Aiden English and Lana, then this storyline's gonna jump off. Okay, we're we're at the beginning stages. Why did you do what you did? You didn't appreciate me, and when Lana came in, it broke it, it tore us apart, and then all the, that was just the beginning. And and now it's gonna go into that personal mm-hmm. range. And the one thing that SmackDown has taught us is that when it gets into the personal range, is it's a is more when intriguing the, story. Yeah. Is 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 when the feud really jumps off. Mm-hmm. Just look at Charlotte Becky Lynch. Look at Samoa Joe AJ Styles. Let's talk about that one bit of Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. My God! First, we get a build up for a contract signing that ends up not happening. I mean, this was at least not on at least not on Joe's part. Let me just put this out there: that that backstage segment with Paige asking AJ Styles not to have the contract signing go a wall or whatever because there's expensive equipment around the ring. Don't insult me. Fuck off. That's, that, was <laughs> oh, that's the, that was the equivalent of Kurt Angle 
Remember when uh, that whole bit is like, oh, he's at the production truck. There's expensive equipment in there. <laughs> yeah. It was the equipment and I of said that. The, and I said the same thing then that I just said. Don't insult my intelligence. We all know what potentially will come. And, and then later on, it's like they, they talk like they know that the contract signing is going to go bad. So in the back of my head, I'm like, then why do you keep signing them? <laughs> as, as the general manager, why do you keep booking them? If you know that something's going to go down. It's like, once again, it's, don't it's, insult it's my nice, intelligence. One thing I like about that is that it was definitely, it's, they, called, it, they called it out on it. Because even the last time there was a contract signing for AJ Styles, Samoa Joe attacked him, which he brought up. He's like, okay, this, we know, usually know how these things go. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's on the screen. Okay, well, yeah, here, that was the I, signed my, I signed my deal, and now, wait, where are you? Are you Styles, how? Oh, hell. That, that, that doing, was the man? point. That was the point where it, it actually started, where I got interested in the contract signing was when he came up on the video board. Because before that, I, I, was like, uh, I was like, don't insult my intelligence by telling me this is going to go bad. We all know it's going to go bad. Even you two know it's going to go bad. So yeah, that, oh, they called it out. I actually think that's bad move. <laughs> so, but once he came up on the screen and basically did a home invasion, it's like, oh shit, daddy's we home. Go. Daddy's home, cut to black. It's like, I oh, love, I love that. that. <laughs> yeah, I that love that great. it cut to black. That was great. That was just like, holy <laughs> shit. I got to see what happens next week. And, and then AJ, St- AJ Styles plays the part well of, no, Joe, what are you doing? Joe, what are you doing? Stop it. What are you doing? Come on, man. You're crazy. It's one thing doing it in the ring, but it's another thing. It's one thing doing it in the arena. Okay, it's another thing going to the man's house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's it. That's what, actually, that's what I kind of liked, that the fact that they said, oh, I'm going to go to your house, like, last month. Yeah. And they, don't fo- they didn't follow up to, on it until now. It was like, oh, yeah, I said I was going to go to your house. I'm already here. Yeah. And that's, that's sick. That was, that's twisted. And continuing on the more personal level, you have... Dan, uh, Daniel Bryan being a special guest, opening the show, being on a special guest of Truth TV. And I must say, Carmella and R Truth, these two should have been paired up a long time ago. Oh, yeah. She and, should uh, know, she, I, I will stand by, she should have been nowhere near the SmackDown women's title picture. She, but now she's Were exactly you where she's when be. they stood up in the middle of Daniel Bryan's promo and said, and Seven said, second dance. Seven second dance break. Let's go. That was, I have to say, I, I actually chuckled a lot because even Daniel Bryan seemed to like have a legit response like, Oh shit, you really were going to have, you really were having a dance break. Okay. All right. It was kind of like people, Daniel as Bryan. Some, as some put it, that was talking smack Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And that's what people loved about it. And then The Miz came out and just said, the difference between you and me, Brian, is that you're a man of uh, morals. I don't care what, what I need to do to win as long as I win. And he proves that in his match with R-Truth, which apparently for, uh, for the rights of Miz for TV. The right, for the rights of the TV show, because apparently that was supposed to be Miz TV, but R-Truth took it over. Or that, whatever. That, that, so that hey, made, whatever. Apparently that became a thing. <laughs> yeah, and, why not? <laughs> and he used that with... The whole thing of doing whatever it takes to win. Thumb to the eye, our truth crushing finale. And to rub that in, adding to the more, continuing yeah. the personal level between the two, running me. And, and, and especially going back over the last two pay-per-view matches where The Miz did anything and everything it took with to win. With the brass knucks. With the brass knucks and then Maurice with the ropes. So it's like... I, I know you're trying to shut that match out of your head, but yeah, it needed to be bought up. It, it, <laughs> so that's unfortunately it did. Yeah. So once again, adding another wrinkle to the feud of and also the fact that it's for the number one contendership for the WWE Championship. Exactly. For the WWE Championship. So here we go. It, the, 
they're making Super Showdown have layers now when before both brands are doing their job Mm -hmm. which is rare both (laughs) brands are doing their job giving their storylines layers to actually make Super Showdown feel the way it's supposed to feel I will say the one thing I liked about this Raw is it did exactly what you just said. It builds for Super Showdown. The last couple of weeks, we're building more towards Crown Jewel. Yes. So in that point, they're just like, yeah, Super Showdown's happening, but we, we honestly don't care about it. This, t- this week, they actually did care about it. And guess what? It was actually a more intriguing show this week, even though it was the lowest rated show in WWE history. Or lowest rated Raw in well, WWE Well, after history. the last two weeks, are you really surprised? No, not at all. Yeah. I, just, I just had to bring that up. But, yeah, and then for back to SmackDown, you had uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. You had Sheamus defeat Big E in another good match. And, 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 and but, I like the fact it, it kind of strength. It makes me feel like the New Day is going to win the feud. Mm-hmm. Obviously, because obviously, yeah. the, the Cesaro and Sheamus have won back-to-back weeks clean. Clean as a whistle. Mm-hmm. So... It's gonna be a very yeah, good it's match. good. It's it's uh, it's two good matches leading up to a good tag team match, but it's not really intriguing anymore in the sense of I we have a good idea of how this is gonna end. Mm-hmm. In the, in the fact that Cesaro and Sheamus as singles competitors are up to nothing on this team. The new day is obvious is. The tag team is the t- is gonna take it as the tag team. Mm-hmm. So it's not really intriguing anymore. But as long as we get the good match, as long as we get end, good wrestling out of should, it, yeah. As, as but we, we know should. we're going. But we know we're going to be because yeah. they're four amazing wrestlers. Exactly. And and remember when we couldn't say that about Sheamus. I never said that about Sheamus. I always thought he was a good wrestler. Well, I always thought he was a good wrestler, but you always had that contingent that. Oh, he was brought up by Triple H. He's Triple H's boy. No matter, it's uh, and and that's the whole stigma with the people with back in the day Triple H, not the NXT Triple H. Mm-hmm. So back in the day, Triple H's boys would come up, and you'd have the Sheamus winning his first title by falling through the by. Uh, that's that's Vince McMahon so, booking. Yeah, that, that is. So, I, I never blame Sheamus. I blame. Poor book. It, it's over the last few years where she- Sheamus, for me, has come into his own. Mm-hmm. Like, there's never been a question in the last couple years. Cesaro and, made him a better wrestler. Yeah. When they were feuding. Oh, yeah. That, that was the be- I think that was the best feud that Sheamus has ever had. Mm-hmm. And so it only makes sense to team them up. Exactly. And it's been glorious ever since. And, and the New Day. Need we say more? It, they they needed a new lease on life, and moving to SmackDown has done that. And so put these two teams together, and you're gonna have a good match. So, right, so not really intriguing, but you're gonna get a good you're gonna get a good show out of it. So I said my bit with Raw versus SmackDown Live. What about you? I'm gonna say they break even. Break. That's, that's the, fair. Because the, they, both, they both did good things. They both had things that I didn't like. So it's, uh, it's, it's very rare on this show. I don't think it's ever happened. Where that you broke even? That any of us have broke no, even. No, I broke even. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But I have. I, I've never broken even. But I enjoyed it's both shows. I've, I've been, I enjoyed both shows this week. I enjoyed both shows too, and after saying the fact that once I turned it off, I it was nothing more than a chore. It was it was it's a relief to say that. Yeah, it is a real relief to a, say that I really enjoyed this. Week's it's show. a relief to turn off Raw and SmackDown and have things to think about. When when the last couple weeks of Raw, you've been like, shut it off. I'm done. I'm out. I can't watch but, this. <laughs> but it's but. Both shows did really well to build up to Super Showdown, and on it's nice to have that. 
it's it's nice to have both shows having good build. So agreed. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what we th- that's what we think of Raw versus SmackDown Live. Now we want to know what you all think. If you uh, like this video, go ahead and press the like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to find us on Facebook, go to our Facebook page, The Scholars of Wrestling Show. And you can also find us on our Twitter machines. You can find the show itself on, at Scholars OW. You can find me, the Scholars of Wrestling Champion, the two-time Scholars of Wrestling Champion. Yes, two. Uh, at The Avataric. You can find me hiding underneath my bridge taking toll money at Atomic Beam Pole. Mountain Troll. <laughs> All right. And you can find Scholar Jeff at I'm Robbie Rage. So, until then, we're getting set. We're getting a nice slow build for Super Showdown. It's actually turning out to be a show with layers. We like a show with layers. We do like a show with layers. Because we are the scholars of wrestling and you have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. See you next week for the sc- the Super Showdown Prediction Show. Hopefully, Scholar Jeff will join us this time. Ha ha! No. No. He's not going to join us. No. <laughs> Just watch. He's actually going to show up then. <laughs>